go. <laughs> I'm not the kind of artist that like writes down my idea and then does research and then kind of works up from there. I kind of just have an idea visually and I'm like, I know exactly how I want this to look. <laughs> My name is Rachel. I'm a fourth year drawing and painting major at OCAD. Although I'm in drawing and painting, my practice has evolved from just painting to doing a lot of sculptural work as well as a lot of like digital work. So currently I'm working in like a collage style portrait painting as well as like a kind of industrial sculptural practice and I'm slowly incorporating my like mixed media attributes into my paintings. I have been making art since I was a kid, but taking it more professionally or seriously for the last like six to eight years. Um, before OCAD, I went to an arts-focused high school called ESA, and there it worked very similarly to OCAD, where we created a body of work and worked around a, like a theme that continued throughout the four years we were there, and then we had like a final presentation at the end. And the work I made then is very similar to the work I make now. See if I can find another little table to put these on for now. Because I have nowhere to put them. And this one is not hangable very easily. I'll put them up here for now. So in high school, a lot of my work was like very much like plant-based, I did a lot of like botanical studies and stuff like that. And the theme I was working a lot with was like preservation of something that was temporary. So often I made like very somewhat like kind of subjective paintings of like different plants and botanical kind of subject matter. <clears throat> and I created it in a style that was very much like a family portrait where I was trying to basically preserve like a moment of something existing into like a permanent kind of, what's the word, like a permanent form, like a painting. And that's what I do now. I often take um, ideas and things I've been through and I compare what they were to what they are currently. And with that, I make these paintings that kind of reflect like on my current relationships and compare them to the past and preserve moments that once were to what they are now in materials that would often kind of outlive the moment itself or last longer than the thing they are representing. Yeah. So I like having my own corner to kind of create my own environment to make stuff. So I get distracted very easily, so I like having my own space. Hi! <laughs> Time to be an art major and steal a table. <laughs> she has three, I want one. <sighs> Perfect. I will put these in the corner. Shall I cut things out now? Yes. All right, it's time to carve shit. Uh, let's hope I don't fuck it up on camera.
I like working with both like found photos and like text as well as like some abstracted elements. So I like working with like patterns and like a lot of very swirly lines and kind of like a cloud shape is really fun to work with. <clears throat> but often I have an idea where I'll kind of have like a base theme and then a visual idea that's really strong and I just collect a bunch of images and text and I throw it all into Photoshop and I kind of just play with it until it works out in a way that I compositionally really enjoy. And that's kind of how most of my collage paintings have worked. Similarly with my sculpture where I have an idea what I want it to look like physically and then I kind of work backwards to figure out conceptually how I can tie like my material and my physical idea and conceptual ideas all together into one. I make art about sad things and then I'm a fucking joke when I'm making things. <laughs> Here, I can put a big easel and rest it against the wall and sit on the floor, which is my favorite way to paint. <laughs> Why go to therapy when you can make prop art about your problems instead? And that's what I do most of the time, yeah. I kind of use art as a way of making my problems feel real. You know how like sometimes when you have an issue and it's just in your head, it doesn't feel real or valid, and then when you put it out, like you say it out loud and you put it into the world, it feels like it means something? I do that with my art. I basically make art about the things I like and dislike and how they affect me and like what they were and what they are now. And I use my art and my practice as a way of explaining that in a way that isn't just in my brain and is visual and interesting so that other people can enjoy it. I mean, I've been in a couple shows, and that was always like the most fulfilling thing I've done was getting to be a part of gallery work. And I would love to go into, like, my dream is to be, like, a curator in a gallery, but also get to, like, make art on the side, or, like, be a professor in a college or university, and then get to make art on the side. Like, I love art, but it probably won't be a full-time thing for me, because although it's something I love doing, it's not something I love doing all the time, because I have other things I really like, and I incorporate them into my art, but I want to be able to use art as, like, my own thing on the, like, on it. That doesn't make sense. I want to be able to do art when I want to and not because I have to. Because I feel like a lot of times I've had to make art because I was forced to do it and now I'm getting to the point where I make art because I want to do it. And that's what I want to keep doing. Because I've enjoyed it the most when it was something that I wanted to do for me and not for other people.